John Kirine. Sometimes I'm introduced as a heretic because I uh, don't believe that the universe is expanding. I think that the Big Bang Theory is wrong. And uh, I also believe that uh, gravity is a push rather than a pull. The purpose of this talk is to show you why I believe these ideas and present them to you. And I think probably the best way to start this talk off is to uh, Give, tell you a little anecdote about Grote Reber. Grote Reber is the really the father of radio astronomy. He built the first uh, radio telescope and uh, made the first radio maps of the night sky. And uh, in his later years, he uh, has been making observations at uh, very long wavelengths, much longer wavelengths than normal radio astronomy wavelengths. And he's built himself a a large radio telescope facility in Tasmania, which is a devil of a place, uh, a little island south of uh, Australia, where uh, he has covered several acres of land, uh, grazing land, with uh, uh, all kinds of wires. And the local farmers would uh, come over and ask Grote, uh, well, what are you doing? And Grote said, well, I'm making observations at wavelengths nobody's ever made before, very long wavelengths. And uh, they said, well, well, what good is that? He said, well, we're going to learn a lot that nobody's ever learned before. And they still weren't satisfied. And finally, Grote in frustration said, well, what good is golf? And the, the farmers didn't play golf either. And so they said, yeah, what good is golf? And uh, that's been sort of a problem with with astrophysical observations and astronomy in general, and that is really what good is it? Does it have any practical use to the man on the street? Maybe we'll see that there might be something that comes out of all this. We learn some things that will be very useful. It's a possibility, anyway. Now, the idea that gravity is a push rather than a pull is an old idea, and it was first started by the uh, Swiss physicist Lesage back in the late 1700s uh, who uh, uh, thought that gravity could be due to something coming from the outside and pushing everything together rather than the objects reaching out and pulling things together. Uh, the idea that gravity was a push due to electromagnetic radiation was first suggested by Charles Brush and Brush gave a talk to this effect in 1910 to the uh, uh, American Association for the Advancement of Science. And this has been published in Nature. Brush is uh, uh, a very interesting person. He was the uh, uh, inventor of the carbon arc lamp and the electric dynamo. He used these system to introduce street lighting to the world. He lit up Niagara Falls first and gave Broadway the name the Great White Way. And, uh, eventually ran into some money problems and had to merge with the Edison Electric Company to form General Electric. Uh, and then he started uh, Lindy Air Products for squeezing down the air to form uh, uh, liquid nitrogen and oxygen. And so he's quite a person. He, his uh, idea that gravity was a push, he developed mainly because he was concerned about uh, the concept of uh, potential energy and the idea that an object could have energy uh, as a result of position. Uh, and he worried about how as you went higher and higher, suddenly all of a sudden that potential energy would disappear if you got close to the moon, for example, and then it could no longer fall back to the Earth. And he, as a result of worrying about this sort of problem, came up with the idea that gravity was a push of electromagnetic uh, radiation, a very long wavelength, pushed all things together. Well, of course, his ideas has faded away in the light of uh, relativity. Uh, but we're going to attempt to reawaken them here, and for an entirely different reason than Brush's reason. It really comes out of the idea that uh, 
uh, that uh, there's a static universe and the universe is not expanding and that the red shift is due to the Compton effect. There's a bumper sticker that is turned out by the Astronomical Society of the Pacific that says, the Big Bang is an exploding myth. This uh, uh, may be a very prophetic bump bumper sticker was done in, uh, in, uh, in jest, but right now the Big Bang has never been on shakier ground. There's observations of uh, dispersion in an electrogalactic pulsar that, that are now providing proof that the red shift uh, on which the Big Bang is based might be due to the Compton effect instead of the Doppler effect. Now the controversy surrounding the expanding theory of the universe uh, goes all the way back to Hubble's law. Hubble uh, himself had a, in his original um, publications with uh, Milton Humason, put a warning on, on the bottom of his papers that said, it's not at all certain that the red shifts observed in the spectra are to be interpreted as a Doppler effect, but for convenience they are expressed in terms of velocity and referred to as apparent velocities. So he didn't really think that necessarily the red shift was due to the Doppler effect. In fact, he wrote a book, and here's the title page from that book. In this book, uh, this is a, uh, a really a series of lectures that he gave to uh, Oxford uh, University. Uh, Hubble really points out that the data that he uh, observed when he observed that uh, extragalactic objects uh, might very well uh, that have, have the relationship to the distance, that that data really is in better agreement with light losing energy to the intervening medium as it uh, travels from the extragalactic sources uh, than it is for the Doppler effect. In fact, he was very emphatic about that and went to the, to the trouble of, uh, of writing that book and pointing out in the book, and this book really should be required reading for, for all anybody who's interested in this subject, uh, because uh, he, he thought, he didn't know exactly how it lost that energy. He called it a new principle of nature. But he really felt that he had discovered something that was very important there. Well, this controversy, whether the, the redshift is due to the Doppler effect or whether it's some new principle of nature or uh, uh, just exactly what is going on here, has, uh, has come into the modern arena. And in this modern, really with pretty much with the discovery of quasars and some other extragalactic objects that, uh, that uh, uh, maybe they're not as distant as their redshift would indicate. Hubble's law is really used to, uh, to determine distance nowadays rather than the other way around. You determine distance and then measure its redshift. And, uh, well, what are quasars? The, uh, uh, if you looked at a quasar, this is a representation, I'm going to have a lot of funny little charts here. <laughs> this is a representation of uh, a star field. And all these little black dots represent different stars. The uh, one that has the arrow pointed to it is, uh, is a quasar. And uh, there's nothing unusual looking about a quasar. It looks just like a star. Quasar stands for quasi-stellar object, uh, which means that it's an object that uh, looks exactly like a star, uh, except for one thing, and that is its, its spectrum. If you look at, at the light from the quasar, it has, um, it has spectral lines in it. Uh, the other thing that's, a, well, there are, well, I said one thing, there's actually two or three things in here that, uh, that uh, are a little unusual. The, the second thing is that it is a bright radio source. It doesn't look just like a, a, a little star uh, as a, uh, uh, in the radio wavelengths. It looks very, very bright. And in um, and the other, un the third unusual thing about quasars is that they do tend to change in brightness over very short periods of time.